Delft Clay Casting. Let's give it a go. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys. In the past, you may have seen me doing Lost Resin Casting, which is a hobby I thoroughly enjoy. And over the years, I've heard from a lot of people who've said, I'd love to have a go at metal casting, but there's loads of expensive equipment involved. Well, I've got two answers to that. The first is to watch this specific video, where I talk about a lot of DIY equipment I've developed that can get you into vacuum investment casting much more reasonably. The second is to try Delft clay casting, which I've personally never done before, but the equipment needed is much more reasonable. All you need is a flask, some Delft clay, which is actually sand, some metal, and a way of melting that metal. Now, I bought this flask cheaply on Amazon, and it came with the sand included. You can buy smaller flasks, but I went with this one as it opens up more options for me. This sort allows me to pour in metal through a hole in the side, as well as from the top or the bottom. The problem is, this flask isn't brilliantly made. This level of movement could ruin your sand detail, and you can see here that things don't line up properly. But you get what you pay for, I guess, and it was easy enough to come up with a simple fix. Keen DIYers could even make their own flasks out of wood. Something like this, but on a much smaller scale. Now the sand that came with this kit isn't actually Delft clay, which in fairness is a brand name. But my purchase claims to do exactly the same thing and save me a few pennies. So I guess we'll have to see. For melting the metal, I already have an electric kiln, but I'm reliably informed by my good buddy too, a professional jeweler from Prince and Poor in London, that an ordinary blowtorch can do the job affordably. So this one is like the stereotypical um, jeweler's torch. Um, I use it for soldering, not so great for melting metal, probably not thick enough over here for the flame. I bought this um, from a general DIY store. I think it was like three or two fifty for this, a fiver for the head. Um, but this melts metal. I've used it to make melt grills. I've used it for sand casting. Um, yeah, this this is perfect. Of course, if you do use the blowtorch method, you'll need a crucible. But these are once again very affordable. You'll also need a straight edge, like this steel ruler, some talcum powder, also known as baby powder, and maybe a craft knife. This sand states that it's resin bonded and may cause irritation to skin and eyes, so safety glasses and gloves are advisable. It bonds to itself very well, so it needs to be broken up and possibly even chopped. All sand casting requires a pattern to duplicate, and I've opted to recreate this Roman coin, which is a bronze casting I made a while ago. We need to start with the bottom half of the flask that has this recessed lip on it. Normally, you'd turn this upside down and lay it flat, but thanks to my DIY repair, that's not possible. Thankfully, I have this chunk of square steel, which will give me a workaround. Simply sprinkle some of the sand inside and begin to compact it with your fingers. Jewelers may use a nylon hammer to aid in this process, but I just use my crappy old hammer. Repeat the process of filling and compressing until the flask is overly full. Then take the straight edge and scrape the excess away. Rotate the flask 180 degrees and you should have a nice flat surface. Sprinkle on a little baby powder and move this around gently with a small brush. This creates a separation barrier, stopping the sand from sticking to itself. The excess can be blown away with your breath, but I have a cheap airbrush to hand, which I'll use instead. 
It's important that your pattern is clean, so wash it to remove any oils or grease. Personally, I also use a little alcohol as well. It's not a bad idea to add baby powder to your pattern as well, and again, blow away any excess. Take the pattern and press it firmly and squarely into the sand. Don't rock it side to side, keep it flat and even. You're trying to push it in around half its depth, so don't go mad. Taking note of where the access hole is in the flask, I began using an ordinary drill bit to push down what will become the feed sprue. And again, I'm only trying to go halfway. This is a six mm wax sprue, but anything of a similar size and shape will work. For now, I'll actually leave this in place. A little more baby powder is added. As the wax sprue is a little long, I needed to remove this for the moment. The upper flask is carefully aligned and slotted on. The wax sprue was then gently replaced. At this point, I recalled my adventures with green sand casting, and using a fine sieve, I scraped sand through it. My logic is that the finest sand will come into contact with the pattern, helping me obtain better details. This gets gently pressed down, and then more sand is added and compressed. Some sand will try to push free of the flask access hole, but this is easily compressed back into place around the wax sprue. Once fully filled and scraped level, the wax sprue is gently twisted and pulled free. The flask is gently pulled apart. Very carefully, the pattern is prized free. Here, I'm very gently pushing at the sand to widen the contact point between where the metal will enter the void. When the metal is poured, air will be trapped within the sand. So directly opposite the feed point, I'll scrape out a small vent. I'm using a two millimeter drill bit, but a cocktail stick would work fine. Don't go too deeply, as we don't want our vents to be too big. The advantage of the drill bit is that it can be twisted to help it pass through the sand. This is then pulled free on the other side. The two flask halves can now be carefully aligned. Using a craft knife, a cone shape is cut around the access hole. This will form the feed point. It's smoothed and compressed gently. The flasks are opened again to ensure the feed is clear of any loose sand. Finally, it's ready for the pour, but my flask doesn't have any means of locking in place. So I added a little tape to keep things in position. As I said, I'm using an electric kiln to melt silver but a blowtorch could achieve the same results, and probably quicker. With the pour done, all we need to do now is wait around an hour for the sand to safely cool down. That isn't looking too bad. It's actually better than I thought it would be. It's important to mention at this point that the charred sand is no longer usable and this needs to be scraped away and discarded. Honestly, I'm surprised by this. I was expecting much worse. For my first ever attempt at casting using this method, the result is pretty good. I was so pleased, I decided to have a go at casting this Skyrim Shield pendant that you may have seen me make previously. I decided to approach it in exactly the same way.
Well, that didn't work. This pendant is thinner and larger than the Roman coin, and the metal doesn't seem to have flowed as well. I guess more vents are needed. That's closer, but no cigar. I guess I need more vents. Now, there may only be four holes, but these are shared by eight shallow grooves, which should help the air escape and metal flow. The observant amongst you may be wondering where the feed has gone. This time, I decided to come at things from the top, or possibly the bottom, depending on your point of view. Now that looks more promising. Okay, I think it's fair to say that these aren't my best castings, but this technique is surprisingly simple and it's very adaptable. I've no doubt with practice I could improve things and perhaps the choice of sand is an issue. Maybe proper delft clay would have produced better results and I'm sure there's folks out there that will share their experiences on that very point. And in addition to this being a more affordable way of metal casting, it's also very quick. Lost resin casting typically takes me two or three days, but I think 15 minutes of flask preparation and maybe 45 minutes of the flask cooling down could give you roughly a one hour turnaround with this style of casting which would allow you to do a lot more casting in any one day. So I hope you enjoyed this one guys. It's certainly a fun, simple and affordable way to have a go at metal casting. So take care guys and thanks for watching.